Okay, sharing the screen. Okay, so elections. Uh, let so eleven twenty four twenty fifteen. So what we had last week elections um, no questions. So elections we have the status. Uh, we have demos. Do we have demos? Sipke Daniel, do you want to show us what you did? Yeah, actually I have a demo. Anyone? I have a demo. Oh my god. OMG. Um, I think we should skip Sipka's demo because it will be shit compared to mine. I will uh, Sipka you should just come back next week. OMG. Yeah, just let me start. Uh, Sorry, yeah. <laughs> I'm kidding. Yeah, and because Daniel likes it, I will take like just 30 minutes out of um, the time uh, allotted to the, the meeting just for Daniel. Nice. Because he likes it. I love when it. I, when, I, when I overflow the meeting, yeah. It's like, um, elections. Uh, elections. Elections. Let's start with the elections. Where is the link to the code? Well, someone will. Okay. Antoine, can you share the link for the election? You always have the links ready somewhere. I don't know why. Oh, Nick, you don't know. You think you know, man. You don't know. <laughs> no, you don't. And that's crazy. You will see. Um, where's the link for the elections? Can someone give you the link? I don't want to do it. Ah, oh, fuck everyone. Nick, where is Antoine? I don't know. Antoine, what are you doing? Oh, thank you. I have to push him. So, elections. Um, so, what is that? Yeah, that's the correct one. Oh, yes. So, uh, Brett um, sent the result. I didn't see there was a discussion. Thing. My fear, oh fuck, I didn't see the discussion. So, so this is the result from last week. Um, Sipke, Sebastian, Bertrand, Zoltan, Benedek, Piotr. The issue being that Benedek and Piotr have the same number of votes. So let's see the comments. Uh, thanks, blah, blah, blah. We'll be have six members this year. Uh, uh, the low turnout, less people voted that we have. Uh, Less people voted that voted? Oh, probably. I don't know how many voted. Process, blah, blah, blah. Okay, let's analyze it. Okay. Why so few votes? Then no objection, blah, 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 six members. Okay, Antoine. We have 20 people on the mailing list. Uh, well, the old mailing list had more than a thousand people, but the new one has just 20 of them. Um, <laughs> We can't do that. I have access to the code plug database, so I could get the but I, yeah. um, uh, I think the this interest in this election, which is uh, indeed prominent, uh, is because uh, generally the steering committee, as a steering committee, isn't doing much. So we haven't had a vote, I think, uh, since yes. the last elections. The people are doing a lot, a lot of stuff, but not because they are part of the steering committee. Yeah, steering committee is not summoned most of the time. That's why maybe people didn't care. Uh, I didn't vote myself because I was part of the candidate. I didn't care about voting, but I don't explain. It will just be plus one. So, um, <sighs> votes are important. 
uh, what is good also is that we don't rely on the steering committee that much. We don't have to do that. It's more like everyone has, has a voice. For instance, Nick participates a lot and he's not even um, a candidate. So you see, you don't, Daniel works a lot and he's not even a candidate. You don't have to be even elected to have some uh, influence on the, on um, the decisions. Mm -hmm. Well, it, it does have a, a symbolic um, value in that when people are unhappy, they can point at us and be unhappy at us, which is something that actually happened yesterday. Uh, uh, tell me. There were, there were a couple of people yesterday in a pretty heated discussion on one of the GitHub uh, issues. Um, and uh, yeah, we don't know exactly what the issues that they are unhappy about are, but it has to do with governance. I would like to have the details uh, on that. So what, but, what is the issue? We should talk about it. Where is the I, issue? Oh, that's the thing. Um, you know, they are unhappy about something. We don't know exactly what. What is What's the issue? The, um, issue? Can you share? Maybe someone... Um, it was the issue about uh, creating... Uh, about uh, having more uh, resources in the common... Assemb uh, the common module that, that has the resources. Uh, yes, I'm for lost. the uh, consolidating yeah, resources. consolidating uh, JavaScript. Oh, uh, the, it's, it's all because of uh, of SQL then. Well, okay. I didn't create that issue. Daniel created the issue. It was more because of me, yeah. Both because I uh, <laughs> created the issue and because I was uh, stupid Indeed. enough to respond to some things. <laughs> so this one. Thank you, Antoine. <laughs> So uh, they have uh, they have valid concerns. Uh, it's just a question about the one to have with Orchard and what we think uh, is generally good for people. Yeah. So there is the technical discussion about the the actual issue, and there is the meta discussion about governance that went on on the same thread. Okay. No, but that's why we also have these meetings to solve these questions and yeah. to answer. So that's good. Um, oh, so much to read. So yeah. Uh, so I was mentioning that because uh, you said that the committee isn't doing much, which is true, except that um, it does represent the, the the project as a whole and its direction. And okay. Yeah, sure. Um, and I agree with that. Uh, the committee more, as you also mentioned, um, more like has a symbolic role. Uh, than an actual one, and I think the disinterest reflects this. All libraries to single feature. I guess there is a, an amount, a fair amount of frustration around um, proposing something and seeing that uh, proposal being rejected, usually for for technical reasons, and I. I would argue for some technical reason, reasons, but I can understand how it can be frustrating that yeah, what you propose is rejected. So it's never. Let's a nice say thing. there are hundreds of people active on the community who will provide some ideas, and we can have a hundred different opinions, and we'll have mm -hmm. to choose one, and 99 will be pissed off because they, yep. it wasn't their opinion. And and what we see usually when in discussions is the people who care about not seeing their discussion, their, their proposition taken, so they will raise your, their voice because, no, this isn't what I want, yes, but the 99 who don't say anything, just... Yeah, I totally agree. And uh, there is there is also something that frustrates me about that discussion, which is that usually when something... Uh, Orchard is made that way, that when uh, an idea is rejected for the core, usually uh, we can say, well, if that's what you want to do, you can do it as a third party module and put that on the gallery. It, it's almost always a valid response, including in, in this particular case. And what frustrates me is when people don't uh, accept that answer, which is a completely valid answer. So that's it. I will read that too, too, too much to read here I, in more context. What what frustrates me more than anything in this particular thread is that the people who are being most vocal in their complaints are not really responding to the um, the actual technical issue at hand, but they're they're trying to shift the discussion away from the the actual question and on to some sort of meta discussion about how the project is governed. 
and um, not really addressing the points of the matter, I feel. So who is Internet Factory? I don't, I don't remember I his think name. his name is Martin Am. Okay. So he, at least he's not talk about it. He does a lot of stuff around. I don't know. Um... Sebastian, no, that's not the case. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I will read it, but I see more you guys talking than uh, Martin and Christian. Well, not here, but yeah, we'll see. Well, Christian, we know is French. We know how French people react. I I understand, Christian. <laughs> I will have to read it. Okay. Um, but if you seem well, if Daniel Zoltan, Bertrand, and Sipke agree, I will agree. Whatever you said. Three member of the the steering committee. What will I say? Closed. Sipke closed it. Okay, let's see. And, <laughs> so, uh, well, and maybe. So Christian did say something that was um, that I don't agree with, but that was interesting. Uh, oh, you, you're you're on it here. There should be only one committee member answering on subjects open here, a spokesman. I totally disagree with that, but maybe that's something we need to discuss. I don't know. Answering on subjects open here. When he means here, he means this conversation. GitHub. Okay. GitHub in general, I think he means. What? Why would we do that? I mean, yeah, it doesn't I, make sense because anyone should be able to voice their thinking. And you see, you should accept contradictors. We contradict ourselves all the time. Sure. Yeah. I will tell Sipke, no, I don't agree. Then Daniel will say, no, blah, blah, blah. And Bertrand, well, no, I think yeah. that. And Zoltan you, usually when Zoltan and, says something, I say I disagree. Always. Right. <laughs> That's the first, yeah. Zoltan, you have something to say? Yeah. No, I disagree. <laughs> yeah, then I probably held this the same way Sipke did by closing the issue. <laughs> Bertrand, be careful because we were using. Well, the reason I closed it is because I pulled in the <clears throat> the PR. So yeah, that's fine. That's we can see there are lots of issues where it's closed, but we can't continue the conversation. Just yeah, the, the issue being closed yeah. doesn't doesn't mean that we want mm -hmm. to close the discussion, which is I mean we have living proof right now. So if we did what um, Christian is suggesting, which is to appoint like a committee member spokesperson for a particular issue, we would lose the opportunity to discuss it amongst ourselves, which is why I think it's a very bad idea. Yeah, and it would lead to close discussions. I think I, it's a really bad idea. So, very stupid comment. If people really want their voice to be taken into account, they should at least be candidate in the steering committee to have more voice and to have a vote and drive the, the decisions or commit more. I mean, look I agree with that. Actually, one of the things I told Christian is, uh, well, election time, which was a couple of weeks ago, is a perfect time to air your grievances. So, and yeah, and yeah, and and do well, something about them. And w one of the things I said as part of this thread was that it, the original work item was brought up on a on one of the weekly meetings and it was discussed there and it was decided by the committee that it was uh, something that we wanted to do and neither of these two people raised their voices back then so, to my uh, recollection and it's been months. So, so to yeah. be fair, uh, th that other person, Intranet Factory, uh, uh, mentioned that and said that the, the time of the meetings was inconvenient for him and that uh, what was especially inconvenient was not having an agenda in advance for the meeting. So maybe that's something that's actionable. Maybe we can publish well, some but, uh, form of agenda, even if we don't necessarily stick to it. But at the same time, this was a ad hoc topic, and yeah, we, I think we, we, say we do week, have an agenda. That, it's that just and, it's just that it's quite a, implicit in what's been going on since the last week. What we do also is that triage. We take the the bugs which are open and we also, if someone is at the triage says I want to talk about this issue we talk about this issue first all the time if you are here mm -hmm. to talk about your issue we talk about it so if you care about something you just show up at the triage and we talk about this issue and try to to see how we can solve the issue itself mm -hmm. uh, 
Can't we have a letterbox or something so if people can't attend, they could yeah. just send in some ideas for discussion? On on the forums, we could have a special thread for that that sort of thing. Topics and 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 also at, yeah, so I I do that all the time. Ask what do you want to talk about today, <laughs> and uh, but yeah, the people who are not here can't say what they want to talk about or suggestions. So well, actually it's wrong because whenever someone on Gitter asks me something and I'm like okay, or send me an email and I'm like that's a good talk to have at the meeting, even if they don't show up, I will talk about it at the meeting and we'll co we could, uh, like the Twitter modules uh, from Alberto suggested, or yeah, I've made examples. But yes, maybe on the forum we could, uh, uh, we could have a forum, would the git, 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 GitHub issue, yeah. Maybe you can also use GitHub issues, no? And just say, what about doing that? And Sure. And they could say, can, can we talk about it at a meeting? Yes, always. Sure, we could have, uh, and yeah, and, and that has the advantage that people will receive email for it if they subscribe mm -hmm. to the repository. And uh, yeah, we could open an issue a week for next week's agenda. People can comment and we close the, the uh, issue a week. And then, so let people... They can also join our triage uh, meeting. There is, the, and um, the, there is also Gitter. There is nowadays there is almost always somebody on Gitter that, that you can reach out to. That's also a good place to have this kind of discussion if you can't attend the meetings. Yeah, Gitter is really really busy. Yeah. Gitter. Nice thing with Gitter is that there is a, it's a, it's persistent, so you can watch what happened. Well, I was complaining last week. I, I just woke up and there was like 100 messages I, I missed. I'm like, I can't read everything. But at least I also do that uh, when I can on Orchard 2. I'm giving some updates what I did and just to let people know what happened on the repository. Just to, uh, what did I do today on the repository so people can follow what, what's happening. I think uh, they like it. Um, yeah, Gitter, Gitter is, a, is a nice way to contact people. Um, even Bertrand goes on Gitter now, I see. Crazy. Um, uh, okay, so governance, people can, can submit topic suggestion. We can't, um, we can't please everyone. There is no way we can please everyone. So what we try to do is make it extensible for any thing you don't like. Um, doesn't mean you are wrong. It, it means sometimes we have to make decisions um, for the most people. Um, election. Why so few votes? It is also this, this drove the discussion about governance. Uh, why so few votes? Um, we should make vote mandatory. <laughs> um, the penalty for not voting? The penalty, yeah. Um, <laughs> you, you're not allowed to comment anymore. <laughs> or you're not allowed to complain anymore. <laughs> but yeah, I'm sure like most of the people here didn't vote. It was easy to vote, right? I don't know. Sending an email. Yeah, Rob, sending out an email, but to whom? So it's also spamming. So the discussion list will have been great, but we only have 20 people on the discussion list. The old one had 1,000, but we lost it. Well, it was deleted. Um, was it announced on the old project homepage? <laughs> oh, oh, and by the way, the old one, and, and we also voted that the new one, we should not add people we know Without their uh, their approval, explicitly, so we can't do that. Um, sorry, Sipke, I cut you. So, so did we announce the elections on the Orchard Project homepage? 
Maybe not. No, I don't think so. Maybe maybe not everyone is following the hashtag, but they they maybe you know look at the homepage. We should like we did with the harvest announcement last year. <clears throat> maybe we 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 should do that on the homepage as well whenever there's selections or something else that's important. A, a widget on the sidebar. That's a good idea. Mm -hmm. Yeah, widget. Yeah. Who goes to the website? Well, at least in the, in the... I mean, it would even be better in the news feed than in the widget on the sidebar. Because... Yeah, I don't know. Both. Okay, let's do both. <laughs> uh, so... Widget plus announcement. Okay. Any other topic? Oh, yeah, we need to, to decide, whatever. Um, so, do we do... Uh, so, I have uh, comments on the election. So, we have a, a tie on the fifth uh, uh, spot. Um, solutions. We either say it's a tie, so they all win. It's like uh, the third place. If two people have the third place, that's two third places. Um, or two gold medals if there is a tie, that's fine. Um, no, it's different because if there are two gold medals, there are, there are just one. Or you say bronze? Um, but so either we accept both of them or we decide how to break the tie. It will be very hard to decide how to break the tie, technically. So I will agree to say they both win the fifth place. Um, Zoltan, I think, was mentioning, or Benedek was mentioning, um, it's the same guy, uh, was mentioning that um, maybe then six, why not seven? I'm sorry, Antoine, but personally, I will not be okay with that. We agreed on five spots. There is a tie, so it, we have to make a decision, but just saying, oh, because we have six, we could have seven? No, because then, oh, we could have eight or... So, uh, what do you think? Committee members. <laughs> I think we should stick to five as the default. And when there is a case like that, I think it's reasonable to uh, to have six. Uh, but that's, yeah, that, it, it remains five or six if there is a tie. <laughs> Solution A, uh, break tie. Uh, second, uh, tie, and we have six members. Third choice, um, what was the third one? I don't know. So who is for one, two, or three, if I forgot three? I'm for A, it's four, sorry. I'm for two, so I'm talking just about the old committee. Uh, Sebastian, tie six member, Bertrand. Zoltan. Piotr. Me too. Two. Piotr is here. I didn't uh, hear him. No. Yes, Piotr, do you care to raise your voice and say uh, one? And, just and Antoine graciously agrees that seven candidates, uh, seven elected, doesn't make sense. So, thank you, Antoine. Thank you. Um, okay, so elections, uh, six members, but we need to uh, update the vote. Um, uh, how do you say that? The vote, vote um, rules. To explain the tie uh, situation okay, for next year. So there is no ambiguity and we know what to do when, when it happens. Um, uh, so welcome, Benedek. Uh, I think you can thank Thanks. all the people in Lombik for voting for you. There must be twelve people in Lombik, right? Uh, I, don't uh, have I think three or me. three or four people voted from Lombik. Yeah, most. You know me, okay? Sarcasm. That's fine. <laughs> yeah. still uh, I didn't vote for you. you. Okay, that's fine. No, you don't know me. 
Um, okay, good. Um, elections. Dictator. A dictator. Votes open. Who is candidate? Sipke, as every year. And I think this will be the only one. Oh, Benedek, Zoltan, I don't know. Bertrand? No. Uh, no. Piotr? So because Bertrand suggested I, I had been dictator for too long already, so we are voting for Sipke mm. this year, if everyone agrees. I would vote yeah, for him. Should, okay. We should vote on who you vote for, Sebastian. That's fine. No, that's fine. Uh, unless everyone wants me again. But Sipke is the only candidate. Sipke, you're I, fine. I'd like you to be a dictator. No, no. That, <laughs> you have to be a dictator. <laughs> you've, you've been the candidate for so long that you need to be the dictator. And we'll see how it goes. And if shits happen, uh, happen this year, it will be on you. Right? <laughs> <laughs> How does, it, so, does this mean that you'll stop running the meetings then, Sebastian? It'll be so Sipke's the, job now? Well, uh, I wanted to talk about it actually. Um, yeah, it's a because good question. Uh, so the first two years where Bert, when Bertrand was dictator, he was driving it. Okay, And when I became a dictator, it seemed like standard that I would drive it. Mm -hmm. um, I don't think it should be linked to the dictator position. Um, Let's see it as a tradition. <laughs> we, I, we, I think it's sort it's of linked to the dictator position because That's part fine. of being the dictator is dictating the meetings, like shutting people up and making sure that we're making progress. <laughs> <laughs> up to six. Can... Oh, we, we could also take turns just for fun. Yeah, well, we have we have six candidates. That means everyone can be. Uh, dictator for for one month twice for a, in in this in this year. <laughs> this would be fun. Be complex. Oh, we need an agenda. Let's make an app. Um, uh, yeah, but that that will be yeah. I'm I'm fine with that. I'm I can be a backup if you need. Uh, it's very easy. You see, I just write the same thing every week, and just say okay, let's talk about it. <laughs> Maybe still will still speak uh, as much as before. Yes, yeah, so Sipke, as you want. Uh, I know also Sipke is kind of uh, shy sometimes. Not shy. Uh, I don't know the word. But not shy. Uh, it's, it's up to Sipke. Really. And if yeah, you I'm, more, I'm not as not as extrovert as you are, and I think you're <clears throat> you're great running the uh, the Thank meetings. Uh, uh, so I, I I don't see the necessity the necessity for change there. Okay. It's you know it, I'm, it's just you are the dictator so you have to talk if you don't want to just say and want but if if people are also interested into uh, taking turns that's fine I'm I'm like that would be fun I'm sure we should try it right next week it would be interesting to see uh, to to have each one of the steering committee members take a turn yep that would, that if would they be are fun. willing to yeah yeah, I'm, yeah I'd be open to that. Maybe we'll see new ways to do that, and that might be interesting. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. You want to start, Sipke? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, sure. Next. Week. Okay. Yeah, so I will say Sipke will try to do the the drive the meeting next week. Uh, I hope it won't be too much pressure, Sipke. Just tell us, okay? I don't want to pressure you. And then we can say define who will talk the the week after if they are available. And uh, the technical issue is that, well, I will still be present and Bertrand because we can open the meeting uh, technically on the admin people. Uh, yeah, and it would be good to have you as a backup. Yeah. Or shut you up if you, if you say that. Yep. Uh, great. Congrats, Sipke. Thank you, guys. Um, I guess. So you have to work on Orchard one more year. You can't quit. That's so sad. That's th that was the way we had to keep you to elect you. <laughs> and it's also good that we have uh, six members because this way Lombi can't block anything. Well, we could yeah, because it if, if we would have five members with just one Lombi guy, then we. Doesn't no, I mean two. Yeah, uh, we know you're the same guy. You have two votes for one guy. That's crazy. That would be too much. Uh, 
Yeah, okay, good. Uh, what did I miss? Just congrats and... Okay, good. Uh, what else? Status. Oh, and we have demos also. Status. I've seen some stuff. Oh, I had the windows open here already. So, uh, last week, much work and pull requests. Um, so, this pull request, uh, you see Daniel Lack can be all I can buy uh, from Bit Gaming, a new Bit Gamer contributor. Uh, it was a pull request. Uh, limit admin menu for content limit for content limit the content. Wow, 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 wow. Dan. Oh, okay. It's not the, our Daniel. Is uh, so yeah. The issue. Sipke will explain that you need. More um, carriage returns here to split it. Um, yeah, yeah, I remember this one. So the idea is that um, there was a bug that would let you see all the content types if you could see no content types in the list uh, in the content list. So he fixed that. And by the way, he says if you can't see any content types in the content page, let's remove the content menu item. So he fixed both issues. Uh, then uh, Thierry fixed the ellipse size method which could break um, an HTML entity in the middle uh, and also used uh, a different uh, the Unicode chart to write the ellipsis. Um, this is the except which is the same thing. Um, Proper line ending when cloning for Mercurial. Thank you, Lombic. We trust you uh, because you're the only one to still use Mercurial and sing them. That's fine. Um, yeah, that's very. <laughs> layouts, widgets, and conditions uh, on the branch that maybe you will. Sh oh, this is uh, splitting the rules engine in the widgets which contain the rules into a conditions module that will just contain the rules engine for the conditions and it's not called rules because the rules is already taken and deprecated so um could decided on conditions so you can reuse this for instance in the layouts menu layouts module um, widgets elements that sipke showed last time uh, support for configuring recipe elements. Uh, oh, this one. Oh, I think this is a demo, right? Because we asked you to do a demo. Yeah, this is the demo. Okay, thank you. So you will show us. Um, this is some minor change that we asked, and instead of asking and waiting, we did it. Just adding a dash here. Uh, Marek fixed the text tokens um, because it was uh, there was a breaking unit test because of a missing feature which was only in dev. But now you can have nice text tokens uh, like and lots of unit tests like text format, which now works. It used not to work, and you see you can have uh, curly braces inside the um, token itself. So very nice addition. Yep. Um, match pull request tokens. Uh, the resources module that uh, Sipke and Daniel are working on. Uh, we'll see how it looks like. This one is um, so. This one I think is moving. Let's see my movie. Yes, uh, the select button when you have a media picker um, pop up will be moved at the top instead of the bottom right because if it's at the bottom right you don't see it and you click on the wrong button. So now it's at the top right, just in this context of a pop up. Um, this one is invalidating an, a profile cache um, if you change the profile. So if the profile doesn't exist, it will cache the fact that it doesn't exist. And if you make it exist, it will think it doesn't exist. So now it's fixed. Um, this one. I 
I don't remember seeing this one. Did I pull it? What is that? Or maybe I'm not looking at the correct thing because there are so many um, tabs changes. Okay, here, yes. This is what is important. When we call href, we don't try to change it if it's an absolute URL. Um, did file notations. Oh yeah, the indentation was wrong. Uh, done, done. Added. So this is a demo. Marek fixed the unit test. Pull request merged. Um, same thing. Long big. So um, so this is um, our new code contributor Mark from Lombic. Um, so this one, um, I commented on each of them. I there is only one that I agree now with. The, with it's the widget. That, so the change uh, I commented on the change set will be changed again. This is not the correct fix. The correct is just to have this line or both of them. The idea being that widget can widget part dot name can contain a dash and it will not work with alternates, so we need to replace the dash by um, double underscore. Um, I was questioning the fact that it actually didn't work, because for the fields it works, but uh, I will trust uh, Lombic on this one. Uh, the, the secure case being, well, let's add the two of them, the old one and the new one, this way we are sure there is no breaking change, um, but this one will be changed, so this one, Tiny MC. Still check this out, by the way, or check that out. Still, so it's still not working the other way. Okay. Um, so this one uh, is about Tiny MC. If you remember, uh, it was a Soteris who opened an issue saying all the Greek chars were encoded in HTML, and for Greek people, it's an issue <laughs> because they can't read what they wrote. Um, and the issue was pointing to the solution, and what has been committed is not what we agreed on. What we agreed on was to not use row, but to use name as the default, and define explicitly what are the ones which are encoded, um, like Drupal is doing. Um, so this is the change we asked for. Um, so if Zoltan, Mark, will it be changed to what we suggested? Yes, I, I regarded this fix already. Okay. Um, and this one, I know there is an issue. We fixed it and undid the fix, I think. The issue with this commit is that what's the change? Yeah, that's, uh, that's an issue. Somehow the, the line endings were mixed up, so that's what you see here. Uh, but if you actually uh, um, check it in KD, if the change will be visible, so that's a general comment about this kind of thing. If um, and Sipka is very good at it too. I don't like it, Sipka, and you know that. I hope um, when you do a change, uh, try not to to also commit lots of formatting changes, even adding an uppercase on every comment of the file, because in the end we don't. We, it's hard to review the the PR to see where the change is and to value that. I'd rather see you create two commits, one with a change and one with a formatting. Uh, so it's obvious uh, what has changed. You see that, that, that's no way to talk to a dictator. Right, uh, but I don't care. I just It's just a recommendation. Please, Sipke, would you? <laughs> <laughs> and well, also, I agree. That's, no, I, it's better to I have mean, two commits, and I, as you just explained. I, I know Sipke does it on all the comments all the time. And, every, and uh, but here in this case, it's re re reformatting the full file. Well, Daniel, you do the same thing with web config files. I know. And uh, by the way, we need to define an official way to format the web config files. <laughs> well, uh, an official way to format XML in general would be good. Yes, or JSON also. So this way, we know when to change it, and yeah, because otherwise, I see there is a ping pong game between you and me, or between your editor and my editor. <laughs> uh, on the web config files. We have shall we um, shall we slug it out in a GitHub issue, maybe? Yes, and update, by the way, the rebracer uh, XML configuration with that, if we can. Mm. So it will be done accordingly. Um, good. 
uh, then fix that widget so it's going on use global application host file equals true so um, this is something that was already in the dev branch but it was missing in 1nx and what it does is there's a, a difference that was introduced with uh, VS 2015 where the default behavior of uh, VS is to create uh, a local application host config file in the code base. Um, the idea being that you can share it, you can have it in version control, and you can share it among team members. So all of the settings that you want to have for IS Express when you're running the web project, they can be shared. But there's a... Um, there's a flaw in that um, in that model in that the path then to where your files are, are located locally must be the same among all developers. So it's pretty much useless for any kind of distributed development. So um, it's I turned it off okay. so that it goes back to the, to the VS 2013 way of dealing with things, which is to use the application host config file that is in my documents. Okay. Fair enough, man. How did you find that? Open Visual Studio 2015, and it creates a file all the time, and you don't care, so you just ignore it in the Git, Git attribute. And I assume Daniel, being professional, he tried to understand what the file was. <laughs> That's pretty much it, yeah. <laughs> Except maybe for the professional part. But. Well, I just ignored it in Git, you know, and boom. See you later. Um, so fixing the Azure uh, solution, because there is only Daniel who thinks about updating that. Um, Actually, it wasn't only the Azure solution. It's something that, that's worth pointing out again. If you go down to the solution file, um, the, the middle one, whenever you add a new module, you need to add a project uh, dependency also. Yep, also, yep, on the Azure. Uh, nope, not on the Azure, on the uh, the normal solution. So what is it? So this makes sure that whenever you build Orchard Web, the module gets built also. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Good. And then the during is. deployment, right? Because when when you build a solution, and then it suffices that the project is part of that solution. But when you publish, then it needs to be part of that um, that, depen answers. that depends on how your Visual Studio is configured. If you're configured to only build the running, the starting project and its dependencies or not, well, I think that's the default configuration, actually. So even for Visual Studio, for the default config, it's needed. No, because it works out of box. Orchard will copy the module dependencies to the dependencies folder, so Orchard will work. Uh, yeah, that, that, but that's it because the dynamic, uh, exactly. the, the, the dynamic compilation kicks in. Yeah. Oh, because of the dynamic compilation? Yes. Oh. OK. Yes, yeah, Seb screen just disappeared because you saw me on my screen share clicking on stop presenting because now it's a Sipka who will show his stuff. That's right. Um, let's see. So, Piotr, no, it doesn't disappear for me. I can still see my screen. So, Benedek is recording? Yes. Yes, and it's loading. And I can it's see back. It. Thanks. Okay, <clears throat> so the thing I'm gonna demonstrate is, is an enhancement to an existing feature that we have called, that's called Layout Snippets, which um, basically enables you to go into your theme and create little snippets of razor uh, views. This is an example. It's a razor view file that's, that whose name ends in snippet, and because of that naming convention with this uh, snippets feature enabled. It uh, provides another uh, layout element. In this case, it's called the Orchard Project because the file name is called the Orchard Project Snippet. So this this is not a new feature. This we we already had since 1.9. However, the, way, the, the naming convention is here is just to have the snippet suffix. Correct. Yeah. So end in end in snippets and it will 
be discovered automatically for yeah, you. And everyone is discovering the feature actually while you are demoing. <laughs> so, well, <laughs> I know last week because I was, oh, yeah. so a snippet is an element for the layout that is resolved dynamically from a razor file, which is beautiful. It's very useful, especially when theming, but when I used this a few weeks ago, uh, I, I found it's, while it's useful, it, it's, it's nice for quick, um, uh, quick setting up, quick, quickly setting up a page, but sometimes there's like variables that you want to be able to control. And up until this change, you would have to implement your own custom element, which is fine and it's fun, but with this enhancement, you don't even have to create your own class. You, all you need to do is just define your snippet. And if you wanted, for example, to have this label here configurable, you just use an HTML helper, which is called snippet field. So for example, that looks like this. I can copy and paste this here. So it's a it's an HTML helper. It's called Snippet Field. We can change the name. Nothing I'm showing is set in stone. Um, <clears throat> but when you invoke this, it takes as a first argument the name of the field, and as the second argument, it takes the data type, if you will, that it will, that it will be used to display the the editor for this field when you edit the properties of this snippet. Because when I save this, and I go back to this screen and refresh the page after saving this. Now we can see that the field is recognized and we can now edit this. Before we didn't have this editor button and now we have it. Uh, so now we can provide a value. And when we save this and publish, we'll, we'll see on the front end that that value is used instead of what we had before, the hard-coded value. And this works for basically any value you have in your in your view. <clears throat> uh, currently, there's just the text editor, uh, but this is extensible. So you can provide your own editors if you wanted to. For example, color pickers, even media pickers, um, which reminds me, if you implement a media picker, it will point to a media content item and that will fail during export. So there's no solution for that at this point, but maybe uh, we'll figure that out later. But this is it in a nutshell. It's configurable snippets. Great, thank you. Great. I like the idea and uh, maybe we should look at it into for simplifying the past development. So like, is it, um, can you substitute the harvester of snippets for your own? Most definitely, yeah. It's uh, as you as you say, Daniel. It's a harvester. So if you look at the layouts module, you'll find a provider called snippet element harvester. So, so for example, one, if you wanted one that that harvested snippets, not that ended with the word snippet in the file name, but rather resided in a particular folder, for example, you could do that. Yes, exactly. Awesome. Yeah, the discovering of the, uh, I'm using the shape table locator, um, I think, is that what I'm doing? Who knows yeah, what the shape table locator is? <laughs> Not all at once. Yeah. Uh, oh, what I forgot to explain as well is there, this snippet field, it, it's not as limited as you, you may think. There may be um, things that you want to add to the more information you want to add, for example, maybe you want to provide the information about the um, required, maybe uh, some certain fields are required, you can uh, extend that because this snippet field is, uh, I disabled resharper, it's, it has a fluent API so you can set more properties onto a snippet mm -hmm. field without having to pass it in through these arguments here. I can actually show you by going into this file, snippet HTML extensions. So I have a little snippet field descriptor builder here. So it takes a name and a type, but it returns this builder itself and it has more properties such as uh, displayed as and a description. And 
we can potentially extend this with more information, metadata information about the editing fields. And what's interesting, I think, the way this works is to render, to discover these fields. What I'm doing is, is I'm actually rendering the shape and then I'm setting some callback here. And when that's invoked, so whenever the extension methods are invoked, I'm collecting um, the field information, which I then use to render this screen here, which I think is an interesting implementation. So this this proof, this um, relieves you from having to define any additional uh, information about your fields. Be detect if you use the same field several times. Come again. If you use the same field several times in the snippet, will it detect it and only show it once on the editor? Oh, interesting. No, not at this point. It would just be duplicate. So, so yeah, that's actually, that may even be a bug at this point because it's using a dictionary, I think, and that would cause a duplicate key exception. That's interesting. I'll try that out and, and even optimize that. Also, or do you think that should not be duplicated? I have another suggestion for you. Don't read the chat. <laughs> OK. Then I will. Then, then, the yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Sipke. Yeah, we'll merge Thank it then. Guys. Well, fix, fix the issue, and then we'll merge it. OK. <laughs> OK, my turn. It's called in Seattle, so that's why we <laughs> have to. So. SharePoint. I like SharePoint. No, I, I don't know. I never used it. So um, I'm busy with uh, Brochured. And I Brochured have too, not Brochured anymore. Brochured, yeah. Um, my solution is still called Brochured, so I don't know for you. But, uh, so let me run it. So what's new? Yeah, I need I, to rename that. Yeah. Well, they renamed the, the link to the GitHub. Um, so what's new? What's new? What's new? The date. So I think it was not the case last week. I just explained that. What I did is that, um, so, so it's clear, uh, the database now, um, sorry, the index and database and the content are stored in database. So... I, I'm not sure it was the case last week. It, it might still have been on the file system, but if you look now at the tables, you will see for each tenant there is a document with the document IDs, the index, the identifiers, and a content table which contains all the documents. So now there is a provider for for um, database, so you can have your content in database or in the file system or anywhere you want. Um, but at least we have it in database too now. Um, that's the first change. Then, um, what did I do, Nick? What did I do? Uh, Lightning DB. Lightning DB. Uh, yes, it works. But yeah, so the idea with Lightning DB is is a storage provider that will save the documents in the compound file. Um, so it's just one file that will contains all the documents, and it's super fast. It can sound crazy, but it's faster than a dictionary. So it's faster to save the documents in a Lightning DB database and to retrieve them than writing and retrieving them from a dictionary. I'm not joking. It's using um, memory mapped files, so it's just writing in bulk into the memory and the file is cached automatically, uh, is sterilized automatically based on that. It's crazy. Uh, what Lucene so uses, right? Lucene is not using that. Uh, SQLite, oh, not. Okay. SQLite is about to use that in SQLite 4. Okay. Um, but Lucene is using their own... Yes, they are using the same in-memory database, right, but not uh, not LightningDB uh, per se. I uh, think RavenDB is using it. Uh, no. <laughs> no? Didn't I, he have blog posts about it? Yes. So the idea is that for RavenDB, they were using Essent, E-S-E-N-T, which yes. is the same thing, but there is in Windows. What they did, they did, they like, they, 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 tested level DB and LMDB, um, and LMDB was much faster, so they decided to use that, but they never used that. What IND is doing all the time is re-implementing it. So what it did mm. is just re-implemented LMDB, which is a C uh, library, 
uh, in C-sharp completely with his own changes and called it Voron. This is what right. you want, Voron. But yeah. Voron is open source, but you can't use it because it's not... It's You can see the source, but you can't use it. Um, at the same time, there's a guy who made some C-sharp binding on LMDB, and it's uh, and I helped him last week to port it to Coursera. So now it's there is a Coursera package that works on Linux, Linux, uh, Mac, and um, and Windows, and I'm using this one. Um, so the the Lining DB is available. So you can have it on a file. You can save your documents on the file system using that. Yeah. Uh, that answers everything, I So, un under which conditions have you tested it? Uh, with only small loads, or did you also force so, it to page and... So, the, to my per the performance tests I did were on 5,000 documents on 10 megabytes, so it was still in memory. Everything will fit in memory. Hmm. But the, there are performance tests on all the... Um, um, low-level databases like this, to, uh, key value uh, stores, and LMDB is the fast even after billions of documents. Uh, okay. it's f so I can point you to, thing, to things that, yeah. No, that, that answers my question. Um, dynamic loading, you also did, did some work on cleaning dynamic loading up? Dynamic loading. Uh, you picked shapes? Yes. Um, Ah, there was something else I wanted to show, uh, but let's start it. So yeah, I fixed. It. Oh no 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 no. Yes. Oh sorry. Database. I changed everything. So now in the data, in the content management, the most important thing I did last week was this thing. If you look at records, what is this thing? It should be deleted. Oh, it's still the same file name, but now we just. Oh wait 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 wait. What is important here is mm. is content item. There is no more content item record. There is no more content item version record. There is no more content part version record. There is just content item. Um, the idea is that now, um, and I'm open to discussion. We can talk about it on Git, GitHub if you want. Um, the idea is that the content, item, the content item object now is the thing, is the document which is stored in the content storage. And every version is a content item instance. So now the content item itself has the property number, published or not, latest or not. It also has a dictionary of parts with the, the name of the part as the string if it's a an actual content part. Um, it has the content type. It has an ID, which is the database ID for this version. And it has a content item ID, which is the logical ID for the content item itself. Meaning, if you have five versions of the same content item, you have five content item instances in database, they will all have the same content item ID. So when we do display slash 20, 20 is the content item ID. And internally, it will look for the content item instance, which is published. So it might be ID, I don't know, 15. OK, this is important to note. So um, um, the, the discussion, the, the decision was driven by the performance. This way, when we want to load the content item, we don't have to first seek for the content item ID and then look for the content version and the content item non-version and do two uh, hops in the database. Uh, with this one, you can just get the version, if you know this version ID, or the published, if you just know its content item ID. It's much faster. The drawback being that um, there is some uh, duplication of data. For instance, the content type, um, for instance, the owner, or everything which will be by default in the content item. But if you think about versioning, before we were creating a new version every time, let's say the body part, we publish a new thing, the body part will be versioned and will be duplicated. So duplicating right now uh, with the new, new system, just duplicating the content type and some other metadata is um, okay compared to whatever we were versioning with all the parts attached to a content item. So there is no change at, at, at uh, that level. Um, it also means that we can see the full story of uh, the owners and all the metadata we will, we will have in the content item uh, document. It's, it also makes the content manager much simpler to implement because there is no more all these versions to 
to take care of. It's just, oh, load this content item ID and it will load the content item document and just call the different events on this content item. It also means you can save the content item in cache because it's pu a pure POCO. There is no relationship with other records. It's a document on its own, an aggregate route, so you can cache it and retrieve it. So it will make performance much better also for caching the, this document. Um, and the management is, is or oh, in terms of API in document manager, it's the same. So you still call new to create a new instance, and you still call create to persist the instance. Okay, everything else is the same. So this is the, a, a major change. Any comment on that? Okay, so big change, and um, and it works. Um, if you look at the database, you will see in the content, it must be this one, these are the JSON documents, okay, and you will see there is a migration and there is the content type definition records, and I don't see my content item, so it must be in another, uh, maybe this one. Yes, you see some content items here. You see content item ID 1. So the database record is ID 3, you see, 3, 3, 21, 21, but the content ID itself is 21, 41, 61. And then you will see all the properties, and for instance, foo is a... Um, the content type, and you will see the parts, test content part, which is stored with the version. So everything is version by default. Yeah. Um, so how it works, like before, it works. Display 61 will load the content item ID number 61. Did I run it? Started F five. So the tenant is loaded on the first request, and you see it's loading the content item foo, and the view is just uh, loading the part called test content part. So the view is very simple, uh, as you would expect. The controller here, the controller is in order for demo. The controller is like last week, the display int id is a content item id, content manager get content item id, view content item. And the view here is display, which will do, it's a content item, model as dot line, line being um, a test content, well, as test content part dot line, which is full. So it works. You can load content items. And it's super fast. So here, uh, I'm in debug mode. I'm using SQL Express and I'm presenting my uh, desktop. When I run in release and I don't show my desktop, I can uh, hit 1,000 requests per second with an average of 1.5 milliseconds per response. And we've done no caching or performance. And there is no caching. Every request hits the database to get the content item. And it also does a bunch of stuff through assembly loading as well. Well, this is just on uh, startup, this thing. So. Um. No, no, no I, because we know it does. No, it still hits it. No, I cached your stuff. Don't worry. <laughs> um, yeah, so it's the raw performance. Now, uh, uh, Nick worked on shapes, um, and uh, so I, what I will present is what uh, Nick did, and uh, it just works. So here's an example. The controller here display shape will take the same ID as the display here, but instead of rendering the content item, it will create a shape for that. So content manager get item, item ID, and here it use shape, which is the um, shape um, factory, which is injected, I assume, there. You see, shape is a shape factory. And because it's a shape factory as in Orchard 1, you can just say dot foo, which will instantiate a shape of type foo, and assign the line property with the line property of the content part, okay? And then render the shape. So view, shape. I will go to the display shape view, which takes a dynamic here. And just to show you all you can do is I inject an eye shape display, a display helper factory. This stuff was in Orchard 1 in the base class. So you will just do so I'm initializing the display property like it is in Orchard 1. So what you can do is do model.line, because line is a property on the shape that was assigned here. 
you can do shape display dot display model, but shape display dot display returns as the string of the HTML. You can call display directly on the shape, like today. You can instantiate a shape display dot bar, and this one is um, is one coming from the shape method. Not this one. No, bar is coming from the shape in the file. So it's a templated shape, bar shape. You also have the baz, which is from an attribute, like in Orchard 1. Boom, returning an HTML string. Uh, this one is to show that if it's a high shape table provider, you can also override what the shape does. So for instance, the shape foo, which should from the template render this thing, will actually render high because we uh, intercepted the displaying event just to show that it was working and now if I go to here display 61 but shape what you have is foo which is the line then this is the display uh, uh, method which returns the encoded HTML uh, then this is the actual display dot foo which returns the content of foo and this is another shape the baz one and this one is the one from the shape attributes Okay, so everything is working and it's still very fast. With a shape, if you use shape like this on this test, I'm running 600 requests per second instead of 1000 requests per second on the same test because now there is a shape which um, is in place and has to do dynamic finding for the alternates. That's the difference. Still one millisecond to transfer. It's very fast. And again, there is a, a database call here too. And um, so shapes are here, everything works. Now, the stuff that Nick didn't know, because when I talked to him this morning a few hours ago, um, I just pushed the, the fix on that, but then what I did is that. Nick, ready? One more thing. Um, display shape. So now you can have a tag helper working with shapes. Oh, Visual Studio, don't die on me. Oh, fuck. <laughs> uh. Oh, it's back. So I'm just declaring where the tag helper is coming from, and then you can type shape, which is a tag helper, type foo. I, I save it. F5 and high appeared because it's a shape foo. You want to show the sh display bar. Okay, display bar, bar. Boom, it works. So next, so the, I, it was like five minutes because the Taylor was just behind me and I'm like, hey dude, let's create a shape tag helper. The goal is to have something like this. Have you checked that in? No. Oh, uh, that's to say that. I don't want shape. I want. I want yes. to type bar directly. That, that's, that's what I'm saying. It was just five minutes prototype, so I have bar. I have yeah. shape right now, but the goal is to have bar with, for instance, yes, properties there. Text yeah. equals. Yeah. Food. That's the goal. But first things first, okay? And then you can have it. And I, I'm also working with him on having a way for module developers and themes developers to define because. All these things are dynamic, so the tooling cannot find them. But I'm trying to find a way to extend the tooling so that we can provide modules and themes with all the, the shape definitions. So from the tooling, you could see the bar shape and see there is a text property and what type it is. And this thing will resolve dynamically the correct alternate and template for that, like a shape. But this thing already works. Shape, type, boom, done. Good. Uh, yeah, I guess, yeah, that's, that dude, that's awesome. So the, the implementation cool thing, well, the other cool thing is it's in a separate. We, the whole shapes thing is in a separate um, nougat package. So if someone wants to use it without using Orchard, they probably could. No, they don't want. <laughs> no, no. I mean, I'm just saying, if you wanted, to, you probably could. Yeah, they would. Yeah, they could. Great. Yeah. Who no, would do that? There's no real changes. So let's find some people who wants to use Orchard first, and maybe some other <laughs> will want to use just shape. Okay. That's true. Um, but it's an interesting use case. It, it speaks to how clean the architecture is, though. It's still a cool thing. Yep. It's still yeah. fast. 
Yeah, um, and we can make this by default if we want. We can hide everything like this, but right now it's very raw, but we'll improve that. Yeah, that my goal is that. I have some... Uh, uh, so can you add properties to the shape element now, or is it just the type attribute? Can you? I didn't get the question. Um, so can you add uh, arbitrary shape properties to the shape element now that you have, or is or is type the, the type attribute the only thing that you can put on that element? I mean, so if your if your foo shape has a text property, can you put that on the shape element now already? Shape element. Oh no 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 not right now no no I it, no you can't but yes you will be able to that like text something like that. Right, that's what I meant. Well, it's a buzz, actually, that buzz accept the text. No, you can't. But uh, he explained me how to do that, so we'll see. But in... Well, uh, yeah, there is a way to do that, um, and it'll be easy to implement because it's a named arguments list, so we can do that. But my goal is really to have the buzz. Maybe something like shape dash buzz, because otherwise there might be some conflicts, I don't know. I have to check all the possibilities, and if you have ideas, uh, go on. But this will be cool. And also, I need to understand what we can do with, uh, if we want something like a shape, shape, what is a shape inside the shape? I assume we should be able to support this, support it, like adding the, sh the, the internal shape to the children of the main shape. This is something we have today, like a zone. We could, you see, we could have zone. And inside the zone, we can have some, I don't know, widget thing. Next week, right? Yeah, that's what, yeah. That was the demo for today. So database working. Um, I have many um, engines on the content storage, and I'm expecting to to have you guys create some caching things, Redis ones, whatever. It's very easy to implement, super easy. We need to break out the database stuff that's in, in orchard.environment.extensions. There's some yeah, database stuff in there. Maybe. It um, makes it a bit messy. Yeah. I don't like it. But, uh, so what do we miss? So next step, next part for me is to be able to dynamically change the layout and the theme engine. Recipes for me. Recipes, and, uh, and then we can migrate all the modules to Orchard too. And uh, next month, uh, we have Orchard 2 on course, you know. Good. Sweet. Bertrand, that's part of your goals? Um, <laughs> good, yes, but I wish we had discussed uh, uh, redoing the content type system. OK, oh, yeah, yes, yes. Actually, I wanted to talk about you. I was about to ping you after on the, okay. yeah, we need to talk about it. It's not, it's okay. not uh, written in stone. Yeah. Okay. I, I, fields and parts and everything, I, I, I don't know. Yeah, I have some ideas. I think it can be okay. more flexible with less concepts. Good. Yeah, definitely. So it, it should be able to do everything that we are doing today with V1 but uh, and, and more. <coughs> so, yeah. Yeah, and uh, good. Yeah, guys, ping, please go on Gitter to raise some discussions and concerns, send Yeah, emails. I was thinking, I was looking at the projections module today, and I saw all the HQL. Um, oh, this will be gone. Yeah, so so you will be able to implement projections with the... Indexes. Uh, indexes? Every, every projection will be an index. The right. idea being now, we will need also at some point to have the dynamic index uh, generation, meaning you define index, and there will be an indexing engine, like we have in Orchard 1, that will work not only for the search index, but also for the projections. And that will build the index, uh, rebuilding the index for all the existing content items and uh, reacting to new content items. So the indexing won't be um, in the same transaction, but in a different separate thread building the index. Um, yeah. Because um, yes, SQL is just an index engine. Right, yeah, okay. So, yeah, I, at some point, I'm sure we'll take uh, every module independently and different people will work on different modules. Uh, this one is very important. Uh, yeah, it will work, definitely. 
we can even optimize the the yes, SQL indexing uh, engine by uh, having it cached also. If we want some specific indexes to be always in memory, like for instance the content item one, where it stores all the published uh, content items and just uh, their numbers and things like that, we could have it in memory totally. Uh, it will be very cheap even if you have millions of content items, just the index is nothing in memory. It's just a bunch of IDs and content types, that's it. So we can we can optimize the yes equal to, to load some indexes in memory. Or in other storage for indexes, we'll see. At least for read only. Good? Yep. Okay, that's great. Thanks, everyone. See you on Thursday. Cheers, guys. Bye. Bye-bye. Later. Bye, everyone. Bye. See ya.